Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when and where you're watching this video from. It's Dr. Katie your radio home. There is something for us to learn today. Of course, that's why I'm here. What are we learning? Why do people suddenly collapse following extreme good news, extreme bad news? Okay, that's what we'll be discussing today. What will cause cardiogenic shock? What will cause a sudden collapse from a shock? Of good news or of bad news the need for this video came up today today after the news of nigeria winning south africa killing two persons that i know all right one of them is a medical doctor a little above 70 and the other is a new copper who suddenly collapsed after the second goal scored by the nigeria team was disqualified and then awarded to south africa as a penalty and it was called immediately that goal was called the daughter collapsed he died immediately that goal was called the youth copper collapsed and died these are the two persons i know and i learned there were some other mortality and morbidity that resulted some people had a cardiac arrest that resulted from that so i felt that this video should come now before the final match on sunday we have to take precautionary measures before we record more mobility or more mortality please you have to do us all a favor by sharing this video as fast as possible it's a matter of urgency irrespective of whether you have been sharing any video or not this video must get to as much as possible nigerians or south africans because we are all africans we are loved ones okay we are one family all right i should care for a south african just like i care for a nigerian it's a game okay one must win the better team or the luckiest team most lucky team is going to win anyway so you must handle it in such manner as to stay alive so share this video as fast as possible to get to a nigerian to get to south african to prevent any mortality or morbidity that will be associated with the sunday match that is why i am here following an extreme news of the loss of a loved one of winning a football game, of uh, of losing a match, or winning a match, of awarding a penalty, or scoring a penalty, of losing a penalty, okay, of being duped, of being kidnapped, of, of a death of a loved one, or of a birth of a baby, you know, in a mysterious way, you know, extremes of good news, extremes of bad news, winning a lottery in the tune of billions of dollars or billions of pounds. There is something that happens. What will happen to that individual is the reason why doctors don't break bad news suddenly. They keep playing around it. They will tell you, do you have a loved one around? Do you have a man around? They prepare your mind. And again, they carry you along. For example, you have a patient in the hospital. They carry you along. If it's becoming bad, deteriorating, they will let you know it's deteriorating. They don't give you false hope. So they begin to prepare your mind. At the end, the news will not come to you and break you or kill you. So they prepare your mind. Even in delivering bad news, they prepare your mind. In delivering bad prognosis, they prepare your mind. You know, they cancel you before they tell you you have HIV. They cancel you before they tell you you have cancer. Because the rush that will follow the breaking of bad news is a bad one in itself. But unfortunately, the football game will not cancel anybody that you are going to win or you are going to lose. That is why I'm here today. Listen attentively. During such events what will happen in this extremes of celebration or sadness because a lot of people were sad that that second goal was cancelled and awarded the penalty to make it worse the penalty was called by them so what do you have to do what you have to know is that during this stressful period stress hormones are released into your blood and the stress hormones that are released into your blood the culprit of this one the one that is causing the major problem is adrenaline so the adrenaline that is released in high surges, in high amounts into your blood, will cause vasoconstriction. That's the effect of adrenaline. Meaning that where blood passes, if it used, if it used to be this wide, adrenaline will cause it to become this small. Something that has been this wide, adrenaline will make it this small. Okay? And by so doing, even coronary vessels, the blood supply to the heart, it will also cause it to be narrowed. And as such, the heart will not receive oxygen. We don't receive blood, and we don't receive blood, and so do we. We don't receive oxygen because oxygen is carried to carried in the blood to the heart. 
and even glucose, energy, everything that the heart will survive on, is carried in the blood to the heart. So as at the time the adrenaline that has been released has caused vasoconstriction, the heart will not receive supply. For that period that the heart will not receive supply, the heart will have cardiogenic shock or it will paralyze the language you will understand. Once the heart is paralyzed, there's a sudden stoppage in, pump, in blood pumping because the heart is that organ in the body that keep, keeps pumping so that blood can move all around the body from the lungs, from everywhere, carry oxygen, carry energy, you know, carry products of energy that the body will use. Okay, I would say carry fuel to the parts of the body so that it can be used for energy. So when blood is not flowing to those parts, they are starved. But in this case, the collapse is not just because blood is not reaching those parts. It's because the heart itself, that is the powerhouse in pumping blood, is not receiving the blood, it's not receiving oxygen that is being taken from the lung. You know, the whole body is working as a unit. So when the blood that is supposed to go through the coronary vessels to supply the heart and give the heart oxygen itself for the work it's doing, it's not reaching it because of strip vasoconstriction from higher amount of adrenaline that has pumped into your blood, the heart paralyzes. And this shock that the heart receives, is, will receives, will stop the heart from pumping blood. And before you know it, within Two, within a minute or two of this event, the person who has the heart will collapse. And to make it worse, do you know that this adrenaline that can cause vaso that can cause vasoconstriction? When you say vasoconstriction, something that will close up like this, instead of opening up, this is dilation, this is constriction. What it can also do, it will increase heart rates. Okay? When it increases heart rates, because you can imagine that when you hear the news or when you are playing the ball, your heart is beating fast. Boom, 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 boom. Something that would have been between, between 17 and 90 is getting to 100, get to 110, 120 as the case it may be, and depending on the age too. And maybe your heart has not been doing that for a very long time. You don't even exercise, you don't, you don't play ball, you don't trek, you don't do anything. And you sit at the comfort of your house watching football. When you have not ex exposed your heart to the extreme of heart rate, Either by exercising, by trekking, by jogging, or by, by swimming, or by any form of exercise. You don't even do it. And then you now suddenly, the heart that has been resting for the past decade, or for the past one year, two years, without exercise, you now come and expose this to extreme rates, tachycardia. Your heart is beating pop, pop, expanding. So the extent you are even perceiving the heart, you are even feeling the heart, but beating. And you don't know you are doing harm to your body. Do you know that we now further worsen? Because at that time of increasing heart rate, there's supposed to be increased blood flow to the heart. Because it's that blood flow to the heart that will cause the heart to receive energy, receive oxygen for the increased work. Because when the heart rate is increased, meaning the work of the heart has increased. So when the work of the heart has increased, what is expected is that oxygen blood supplies will increase so that oxygen and sources of energy should get to the heart fast. Because the heart is working. But unfortunately, what is increasing the heart is also shutting the door that will supply the heart with what is needed, the fuel that is needed to fire on. And at the end, there's a sudden collapse from a shock of cardiac origin, cardiogenic shock. If I were to put it in the language that you hear, the heart will be paralyzed because it has not seen oxygen, it has not seen glucose from a vasoconstriction that has cut off these blood vessels. Please. Africans, on Sunday is the final play. If you know that you are not able to, you can watch a replay. Don't go back kill yourself for your wife. Don't go back kill yourself for your children. Because most times it's the men that prefer, you know, that prefer the football game. Also, though there are some women, I'm not saying women don't, but the majority of men are lesser minority of women. Okay? Both men and women, I beg you. Because it is even said that this shock, okay? from extremes of good or bad news is worse in female that are post menopausal so if you are post menopausal don't even dare to sit in the city room that day and say you want to watch football dogs the risk is higher with post menopausal women to have such attack on their hearts from extremes of bad or good news so don't go and kill yourself for your children don't go and kill yourself for your husband for your loved ones watch a replay stay away from the screen that day when the game has been played you can go back and watch it, all right? And at that time, you have heard the news. You have gradually, you know, been getting to absorb whatever the news is. Is this celebration? Is this sadness? Have you lost or have you won? You have been able to digest it. And when you are not watching it, you know what is going to happen later. 
So your heart will not suddenly paralyze from lack of supply of oxygen or blood. Please. Do you know why footballers are able to actually sustain it? Because you will wonder, why is it that there are people that are benched while others are playing? There is a coach. There are, there is, there are assistant coaches. Okay, There are uh, football members that are benched. Don't mind me. I'm, I'm not very good at football. Okay, That are benched. And there are people that are playing, level of them playing. You know, even the penalty or whatever part of the game they are playing, why is it that they don't suddenly collapse from, from such adrenaline rush? Because they are the one at the heat of the game. In fact, it's, it, it is even their career. They are the one that will be paid if they are successful. They are the one that will not be paid if they lost out. Meanwhile, you are just watching. Whether they lose or they win, you have no benefit. You have nothing to gain financially apart from the fact that you say, I'm in Nigeria or I'm in South Africa. Or depending on where you are from Africa. I care about you as an African. We are one human being from one God. All right? So be careful concerning this game that is coming on a Sunday. The reason why footballers don't drop and fall, that's what I want to tell you. Their heart has been exposed to extreme, extreme of stress. Okay? From exercise, routine exercise, regular exercise, regular football game, to the extent that their whole heart is now set. Heart rate is now at the lower set number, so that before you get a heart rate that is high in there, it's, it's going to be very difficult. A regular athlete will be having heart rate between 50 or 70 beats per minute. Why some of us that we hardly jump, we hardly trek, we hardly swim, our heart rate is 90 and a little above it and thereabout. And because their heart rate is regularly pacing and dropping, regularly pacing during exercise, during rest, and dropping, you know, used to this swinging from one extreme to the other, it is fit. They have a fit heart. Their myocardium is strong. Let me not use strong words. I promise not to do that. Their heart has got it. Their muscle, the muscle of their heart is strong compared to you that is not exercising. The muscle of your heart is flabby. You know, it can easily give up. But their own muscle is strong. And in fact, their own muscles have even gotten used to hyposia. Because as at the time they do extreme exercise, their tolerance is built. When the heart rate is increased, you know, you see them breathing through the mouth, through the nose. The heart rate is, is faster than even the oxygen that they get at some times when they, are, when they just started training. But they begin to build the integrity of the heart. The heart even tolerates and use whatever is getting to it at that time. That's why football game is played outdoor, so that the oxygen will be free. You can't lock the door and be playing football when you don't have cross ventilation for proper oxygenation to be used at that time of extreme or active exercise. So the reason they don't collapse, their heart is fit, their muscles are fit, your own is not fit. Don't be equating yourself and begin to stay in front of your television and be looking. In fact, if you have not done exercise in the last one month or two months, or you are not even on a regular routine exercise, you don't have a right to stay in front of your TV and be watching live program. Should I tell you a life experience? Okay? I was watching that game. Immediately they scored the first goal. I was wrecking. Can you imagine? We are Nigerians. We are giants of Africa. I was raising here and there. I was excited. I, it wasn't my intention to even watch the game. It's just that at the time I got to got home, I met that the game was being watched in a city room where I shared with my spouse. So being around that environment, I was not concentrating until the first goal was scored. When the first goal was scored, it caught my attention. As a Nigerian, I was celebrating, I was jubilating. And beyond the second one came, I danced, you know, I was ranting as the giant of Africa. I said a lot of things. But you know, immediately that game was, that goal was disqualified and given to the opponent as a penalty. And they scored. I got up quietly, picked my bag and my phone, went to the city room and did, tried to do some other things that would distract me. My sons were shouting, I was still here in the room, I warned them, if you are not going to keep quiet in watching this game, I'm going to put it off. You know, I don't care if you are not going to let me. You know, but that was what I did. I decided to help myself because I discovered that I was being heated up, heated up. For what? I was feeling, at least my temperature was rising. Why would I do that? I left. As at the time, I told them, everybody be quiet. They were quiet. I didn't even know what was happening in the city room because they were watching the game in the, in the bedroom. I didn't know what was happening. Only for my sons to run to the city room. Mommy, we won. And I was excited that I was. Because at that time I was in the city room, I've already prepared myself for the worst. 
you know, they were teachers. I said to myself, they are the owners of the career. If they do well, they are the ones to be paid. If they did not do well, they are the ones that should not be paid. So they are the ones that should be more dedicated to put their best in this game. You know, there are things I said to myself to push it myself. Because I don't have a human being. You think doctors are not human beings. If I have a person that collapsed and died now, it's a medical doctor. So don't deceive yourself that I have the information better than you know does not make me a, a supernatural being that will not feel what human beings feel. Okay? I am a doctor, but I'm a human being. The difference is that I've got information that can help prevent disease and promote health, that can help prevent some sudden uh, misharm, some sudden uh, events medically that will not be palatable. That's just the difference. It doesn't make me a, 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 a superhuman being that will not feel what other human beings are feeling. So my part of the game is that I will learn from the information that I have. I will not want to experience it and better go quietly. That was what I did and I came back after the game. So come forth Sunday, I beg you. I'm going to do a short video too of this one. That will not be this long so that it will be easy to be shared across all platforms of social media. All right, I'm going to do that. This is because I want to get to as many as possible before the Sunday match. Please don't go and collapse, don't kill yourself for your loved ones. Don't do it, they love you so much. Please don't do it. Stay away from extreme stress, stay away from looking at the screen that day. And you know, another thing that's very painful. So, people will go to the bar to go and join friends in watching the stress of the game is releasing adrenaline and increasing heart rates the alcohol in itself is increasing heart rate oh i pray for you so what it is is that the heart is receiving pressure on both sides the alcohol that you are sipping that you think that you are watching the game on top of a bottle of alcohol in fact you can even cross your leg and begin to boast about it but actually it's all putting your heart at risk of a a, a, a sudden paralysis or a sudden stoppage in function that's cardiac arrest a sudden stoppage in its action to pump blood for the normal metabolism and survival of the owner i have not come to judge you, you know i say that most times no matter how harsh no matter how forceful i put this information before you i have not come to judge you i have come to give you information that will help you prevent disease that will help you stay healthy that will help you live well that will help you prevent sorrow because you you can imagine what will be happening to the mother or brother or the loved one of that copper or of that doctor i know right now they are sad they would not even be there to watch the final match why do that okay if you cannot do it watch after match if you think you can you must be one who is fit who is an athlete who exercises who has exposed the heart to several extreme activity before regularly not the one that you did for example, you used to swim 10 years ago, but you are still swimming. You are like somebody that never done the SS, done that before. You used to play football 20 years ago, but you never did now. You are like somebody that never played football. Okay? You used to jog five years ago. You are somebody that never did. So the people who are who have gotten the cardiac integrity, the heart integrity. To begin to look at such football are people that are still irregular exercises. In fact, they did, they worked out yesterday and they have done three times in one week. Not the one that did it for God knows when. All right? Take precautionary measures and live healthy. Dr. Kate said so. Hope you have learned something because that is the reason I come to you every day. Something for you to learn to stay healthy and keep well. Thank you.